previously on Pretty Little Liars Original Sin. Hi guys, it's Lauren Daisy. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to the long-awaited um, Pretty Little Liars Summer School Finale Recap. I, I apologize that it has taken so so long. I mean the episode literally came out like three weeks ago now or two weeks ago, whatever, however long it is, it's ridiculous. But I went to the Eras tour, big ups, um, and got horrifically ill afterwards. Um, so literally for the past two weeks, um, week and a half, I have just, my voice has been gone. Like it's still a bit like gross still, but hopefully it's not too bad for you guys. Um, yeah, just absolutely took me out and it's been so annoying because I've had so many like videos scripted and like that I want to film for you guys and they're all just sitting here like waiting to be done waiting to be filmed and I could not film anything um I was <laughs> quite frankly barely getting out of bed <laughs> so but we're back now like we're back I think you know we feel we feel better we're on the mend so Today we're going to be talking about episode 8 and I watched episode 8 live with you guys which was super fun. I absolutely loved that and I want to do it again. Um, so I'm thinking we're going to watch a pilot so you can go over to my community tab and vote on which pilot you want to watch. Um, there's Pretty Little Liars, 90210, Gossip Girl, and Desperate Housewives. Um, so go over there and vote and then we'll do that at some point maybe like in the next couple weeks um i'll like put up a post and stuff with with the times and that um so that'll be really fun and i feel like there was a little bit of confusion about the live stream so the live streams will be open to everybody um you do not have to be a member to come and watch them when they are live um but the actual like replays of them will be like member exclusive um so that is kind of like how that's working um, yeah, when the actual live stream is happening, absolutely everyone will be able to watch it, um, but it will just be the, like, re-upload of it afterwards, that is, um, member exclusive, so, yeah, um, and I've seen you guys, I've seen all the comments about where is episode 8, where is the recap of the finale, and yeah, I'm sorry that it took so long, but I'm here now, so, episode 8, was called also this is a side note um but it is an injustice that we only got eight episodes i know it was like to do with the writer's track and stuff i think which big ups like absolutely support that one thousand percent um but i do hope that next season we get at least 10 but i think it would be fun to get like 12 or 15 i just miss I miss the longer, the longer seasons. I really do. PLL Original Sin Instagram coming in at clutch as always. Here we go. Final exam. Okay, final exam. That's what this one was called. So we start off at the pool. It literally picks up right where we left off at the end of episode seven. And Farron saves Kelly. Um, and yeah, she lives, which I was glad about because I didn't want Kelly to die. Um, I didn't think that she would. I thought she would be fine. But I'm glad that she didn't die because I think her character has so much more potential and I'm excited to see how they kind of utilise that in season three. We still haven't had an official season three announcement yet, which I'm hoping comes soon. I think there was about a month or just over a month between the season one finale and the season two announcement. So hopefully that'll be coming soon. I feel like it did really well. Like, at least from an outside perspective. I feel like my videos on it like got more views this time and um, you know like the PLL original scene Instagram was really growing and I was seeing it like trending on Twitter and um, the cast kept posting that it was in like the top uh, 10 or it was the most watched thing on HBO Max like every time it was coming out. So from those kinds of statistics I'm hoping that it will get renewed. Um, I would love for them to just renew it because like with Brill Liars, when it got to the end, they renewed it for a season six and seven, like at the same time. So I would just love if they renewed it 
up to season five. Like, just put us out of our misery. I want to know that this show is lasting. But anyway. Um, so the rest of the lies come to the pool and, like, Farron tells them what happened and, you know, Kelly thanks her for saving her life. Um, and she apologizes to the girls for Hell House. And I don't know. I just found it a bit weird. Like, I don't know if it's because there are shorter episodes, but they kind of just forgive her very quickly. And I think what she did was so incredibly traumatizing. Like, it's one thing for like, oh, you know, drugs are bad. And like, and that whole vibe of the Hell House wasn't great. But the specific of like, pretending to be Imogen's mum in her bed is insane and it just felt so out of character for Kelly and then for her to just be like oh I'm sorry for what I did like that was really bad of me like crazy Cr absolutely crazy and so they ask Kelly if could that have been your mum and she's like well no I locked I locked that bitch up like <laughs> she's she's at home in the prayer closet um, and so they're like, well, could she have escaped? So they all go and check and she's still in there. So they rule her out of being bloody Rose. Um, I thought she might have been involved, but I never actually thought she was the one like doing the killing. Um, so I was kind of like, okay, that's fine. The girls then go and get pizza and they're chatting and Imogen tells them about Dr. Sullivan being kidnapped. And Mouse also tells them about Rose Waters showing up at their house, at her house. And they're like, well, what did you do with her? And she's like, oh, I just, I took her somewhere safe. And she took her to Crazy Joe's train car from season one. So obviously the girls were like, babes, not safe. And so they go there to try and find her and she has disappeared. So they come back to the house, um, to Sydney, because she's like the only mum that's like in town at the minute. And they see that she's also gotten red roses. So they're like, okay, we need to be keeping an eye on Miss Sydney. Here. So then the next day, um, Sydney's like, you guys have to look at the news and Tabby and Imogen come down. And there's been a riot where Archie is being held. And he's actually being held at the Ravenswood Penitentiary, which is interesting. Um, because we never like heard of this jail. Um, but slay i love a ravenswood reference because i feel like the pll references have definitely been like fewer and far between this season um which was a shame because i really loved like finding those little easter eggs in season one um but yeah there have been less of them in season two but i did like that ravenswood got a little shout out because i wasn't expecting it to um i have a whole video on ravenswood if you want to go and watch that if you like didn't catch it when it aired or um, don't really know what that whole thing was about. I have a whole like deep dive video on it. Um, but yeah, so there was a riot, this prison riot broke out and I think some people like escaped or whatever, but, um, they were reporting that Archie Waters had actually been killed in this prison riot. And I was like, yeah, okay. In Prill Liars where like nobody ever really dies properly, like, absolutely not like <laughs> the main villain of season one dies off screen i don't think so also where the hell is principal clanton because they never mention him like they don't mention him getting the death penalty like archie they don't mention what happened to him they don't mention him in this like prison riot like is he in the same prison like i don't know i feel like maybe like i don't know if we're just supposed to forget about him forever or if he's gonna make a comeback in like season three but yeah, very weird. Um, I wonder if it'll be revealed in season three that Archie actually killed him in the prison riot, like out of like revenge or like not wanting to be controlled by him anymore because yeah, Principal Clan was kind of directing Archie in season one, but now we see him completely detached from Principal Clan. So I wonder if season three, it'll be revealed that Archie actually killed him as like kind of like revenge or like you know I'm on my own now dad so then Kelly comes to the house and she says to Tabby and Imogen that she spoke to her mum about Bloody Rose and she actually thinks that Bloody Rose could be Mrs Langsbury because 
apparently Mrs. Beasley was like, that lady's got darkness, okay? Big time. And so Tabby and Imogen are like, oh, like we really didn't want to go and speak to her, but we're going to have to, we're going to have to suss her out. And I was just like... I, okay, I'll talk about my thoughts on the reveal when we get to it, but yeah. Um, so anyway, they go and suss her out and Imogen was like really nice to her. And I was like this, like uh, props to her because that would not have been me. Like, and Tabby, like not wishing her well or like anything. I was like, you know what, Slay, like as you fucking should, like she's been awful. So anyway, um, they see that she's been sent red roses. And so they go back and kind of report to the girls and they're like, well... Is this just like to throw us off or is she actually going to be one of the next targets like Rose Waters or Dr. Sullivan? And so Jen and Noah are talking and Jen says, you know, has anyone suspected Johnny or Christian? And I was like, that is bloody rich coming from you, babes. She's like, these people came out of nowhere, like, as did you. Like, what? But anyway, um, so then Principal Smithy tells the lies they actually failed their Keystone exams, which means that if they don't pass next time around in a couple weeks, then they will have to repeat junior year, I think it is. I'm not sure. Um, and so they're basically like, we are not going to let Bloody Rose make us fail this exam. Like, we are gonna, we're going to study for this. And while they're, like, discussing this, Noah brings up Johnny and Christian and... Then Imogen and like Tabby point out Jen and then like all the girls start bickering and honestly it was such a good scene. They felt like such genuine like friends and like teenagers in this scene because that's exactly what would happen. Um, and I just found this scene absolutely hilarious and I thought it was really like well done. Um, I think I... One of my favourite parts about Pretty Little Liars, the OG one, was the female friendships and the friendship group. And... I think I also love that about, you know, Original Sin, Summer School, but I think it needs more developing. I think Tabby and Imogen are easily the closest and there's a lot of development there, but we don't really see a lot of the others, like, individually. We don't see, you know, like, Noah and Mouse, like, hanging out or Mouse and Imogen or Tabby and Farron, like, so I think I would like to see more of that and, like, them as a group just yeah like hanging out and stuff I think is fun like we saw that initially in like the beginning stages um of like them just like spending the summer together and stuff which was nice and I'd like to see more of that um because like this scene felt very like genuine and real and it made me like actually believe that like this group are like genuine friends so I would like to see more Kind of scenes like that in season three. So Imogen and Tabby agree. They're like, fine. We'll each suss out our boyfriends and just see what the deal is. So Tabby calls the old um, movie theatre that Christian used to work at. And they don't recognise his name. And now this obviously was to create suspicion around him. Which end up being fine but I wonder if they're gonna bring this back in season three because like even though he's not involved with bloody rose like what like what was this about like why didn't they know his name like that's still weird to me and I feel like if I was tabby I'd be like I'm not gonna just forget that you know um Imogen also quizzes Johnny and doesn't find anything and like oh, I'm just so upset with this whole Imogen and Johnny thing because, like, she, like, accuses him of texting somebody else and, like, looks through his phone and stuff and, like, he's just so genuine and, like, nothing bad is happening and I just thought I was like, girl, you are ruining this. You are ruining it. So then Mouse um, on Spooky Spaghetti, she finds videos of the deaths um, that we've already seen. So, um... Oh my god, what was her name? Like, Sally or... Shelly or something? Like, Karen's old friend. Um, her death and Sabrina and Nick's death. Um, they basically all been posted on to Spooky Spaghetti. And Imogen goes... 
Imogen goes into the freezer at the Millwood Creamery and finds their bodies in the freezer. And so she thinks it's Johnny that's done this, which was wild. Like, obviously, I know she's going to have trust issues, but this man has literally done nothing to make her think that. And like, A is the master of getting you to believe things that aren't true. Like getting you to suspect people that aren't really dodgy. So I feel like the fact that she just jumped to like, oh my God, my boyfriend's a killer. I was kind of like, babes, be so for real right now. And she literally hits him over the head with like a wrench or whatever that thing was and drags him into the freezer and locks him in there with the dead bodies. I was like, are you mad? Are you actually mad? Um, and then meanwhile, this is happening. Tabby goes to investigate Christian's basement and she finds a Davy mask in there. Um, and so she's like, Christian's involved as well. Again, like, there is no trust. Like, you people don't trust these people. Um, and so she's going to, like, go back up and tell the girls about this. And that's when Bloody Rose surprises her at the top of the stairs and kidnaps her. So then the girls go and they confront Christian because Tabby doesn't show up to their meeting. And they're like, well, she was going to go investigate him. So he must have done something to her. Um, and Mr. G, um, Mouse's tech teacher, he tells them the servers for spooky spaghetti are at the orpheum like that is where spooky spaghetti originates so they're like christian's dodgy like he's bad so they go and confront him and he's like what the fuck are you talking about like he's like i don't know where tabby is like i've been calling everybody like what the hell is going on so they're like oh okay maybe he's not dodgy um and tabby wakes up in the church of like sister mary or holy grace or whatever it is um and she's in a confession booth and she looks to her right and Rose Waters is sat in the other side of the booth, dead, with her face skin, honestly, it's 10 out of 10. I think the horror of this season has been at 10 out of 10. I loved Original Sin, loved it, I thought it was great. Um, I have preferred summer school. Um, I loved it. Absolutely love it. I thought it was 10 out of 10. I thought it was so good. Um, and I think it has the potential to just get better as the seasons go on. Um, but yeah, this was crazy. So Rose is dead. She's been, her face has been skinned. Bless her. Um, she comes, Tabby like breaks out of the booth and the church is the decoration, the set design, 10, 10, uh, like there's all these horror masks around and it's all like decorated with the paintings of the girls doing their like final tasks, like so good. And so she's like, what the hell is going on here? So a bunch of like the spooky spaghetti, like followers, like the people that we've been seeing on the forums and stuff, they come into the church and they have like these headsets on and they're filming everything. Um, and it's being live streamed and the liars are actually watching it because it's being screened in one of the screens uh, at the Orpheum. So the girls are watching and they're like, what the hell is going on? And so they're all like kind of surrounding Tabby and Bloody Rose comes out and Archie comes out. And I was like, immediately was like, this is not Archie. Like, uh-uh, he's not like the right build to be Archie. So, <sighs> Bloody Rose is revealed to be Mrs. Langsbury. And I can't lie, I did not like this. I feel like a lot of people didn't like Principal Clanton last season. I didn't mind him because I could actually go back and track it and it made sense to me because I had actually predicted him like as potentially being like one of the A's because I thought that was him like in the flashback that they did and stuff um so his one didn't bother me too much this one bothered me because it felt I don't want to say lazy because lazy is not the right word but I guess just like a little predictable I feel like Mrs Langsbury was someone that I guessed from the jump and then I was like that's way too obvious 
Um, and also, like, why would she go after the other liars? Like, it doesn't make any sense. Like, she's got no beef with Noah and Farron and Mouse. Um, and so, yeah. And, like, it was so weird because obviously they had had somebody else playing Bloody Rose. Um, the girl that actually played her, like, um, as the stand-in had, like, posted on Instagram and stuff. Um, so she wasn't played by the actress that plays Mrs. Langsbury the whole time. And I think that was just painfully obvious. Like, once it was actually the actress that played Mrs. Langsbury in the Bloody Rose costume, she looked completely different. Her demeanour was completely different. Like, it was so weird. Like, it was like it was a completely different... Like, obviously it was a completely different person. But, like, <laughs> in terms of canon, it just felt like a completely different character. Like, this scary, like... One that, like, obviously it makes sense that she came after Imogen, but, like, that sent this dog after Noah and was this, like, looming, like, force that almost, like, killed Farron and was, like, slashing at the fence and stuff. Like, it made no sense for her to act like that towards Farron, I don't think. Um, and, like, Mouse and stuff, like, it was just weird. Um, the way that she targeted them and the order that she targeted them in, like... I don't know it just it felt weird and I didn't think made sense for it to be her personally and I don't think I don't know like to me Bloody Rose was so cool like I loved her I thought she was a fab like I thought she was such a good villain like I preferred her to Archie but then as soon as she it was like Mrs Langsbury in there it just brought her so much further down because she didn't feel as menacing it didn't feel as, like, pure evil, like, it just felt like it didn't really make much sense, um, and yeah, like, once it was Mrs. Langsbury in there, she completely lost her call with Tabby and just started, like, yelling at her and calling her, like, a whore of Babylon or some shit, like, and then, yeah, like, it's so weird, like, she was so, like, you know, intense and, like, scary in these other scenes, and then immediately, like, once it's revealed that it's Mrs. Langsbury, she just, like, crumbles, and she's just, like, you whore, like, all this stuff, and I was just, like, I just, yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't into it. I loved this season, like, like I said, set design, costumes, like, plot lines, love interests, like, all this stuff, I loved it, but for me, this did feel like a letdown at the end, um, I just wasn't into it and Mrs. Langsbury as a character I found incredibly irritating and not in like a good hateable way just in like an irritating hateable way and it kind of gave me like flashbacks to I think I've said this a few times like Riverdale where you had villains that were so good like the Black Hood and then you had villains that I just felt were so irritating, like Percival, I just wanted him to go, like I didn't even find him entertaining as a villain, and like people like Wilden uh, from the original Pit of the Pit of Lies, or like Tom Beasley, like they are villains where you genuinely like hate them, but it's good, like they are good villains, and I just didn't feel that way about Mrs. Langsbury, like I just found her irritating, so for her to be like the big bad, and for her to be Bloody Rose, like to me just didn't match and I just didn't like it um so I'm interested to see what you guys think about this like do you agree because I know that a lot of people thought it was her and I thought it could have been her in the beginning but then I just kind of left that because I was like it's too obvious and also like doesn't really add up that well and so yeah Bloody Rose is revealed to be Mrs. Langsbury and then um, Archie takes off his mask and he is Wes. Now, Mrs. Langsbury, not my favourite, didn't like it, would have had her be somebody else. Wes, however, loved it. I thought the Wes reveal was great. I really loved it because I had predicted Wes, like he was one of my final predictions um, to be part of this whole thing. And his whole motive is that he's creating the ultimate horror film, right? Like, he is making a real-life horror, like, he's live-streaming it, he's filming it, like, he's built up all this stuff, he's had this crew that he's, like, recruited through Spooky Spaghetti, and um, his big finale is going to be killing Tabby, and, like, she's the final girl, and, like, I loved it. I thought it was great. 
Um, I thought it was so much fun. Like the idea that he was then filming all of the girls, like tasks and trials and stuff to like put together into this movie. I loved it. I thought it was great. Um, and I liked that they carried it through again, like Mrs. Langsbury, she just doesn't make sense. Like I get this whole revenge for like chip thing. And she wanted Tabby to confess that it wasn't true. But like, to me, that just, it just didn't land. Whereas like with Wes, he was creepy in season one. And I literally said from the jump in season two, I was like, let's not forget that Wes was weird in season one. Like Chip turning out to be evil, kind of like overshadowed Wes being creepy. So I like that they carried that through, that he was creepy in season one and that he did end up being evil in season two. I thought it was great. I loved it. The whole ultimate horror thing. Um, yeah, I thought it was great. I loved it. Um, and he, when he was like, yeah, I planted that mask to make you think it was Christian. And like, obviously they'd like planted the bodies to make Imogen think it was Johnny. And like, it was really like well thought out on his part. And he's obviously like the mastermind of this whole thing. And I loved that. Another reason that I'm not huge on this duo of Mrs. Langsbury and Wes is because it feels incredibly predictable when you go back and look at the clues, like, which is fine. Like I've said before, like, I like to guess what's going to happen. I like to pick up on the clues and like work it out, which I feel like I did with Wes. And I, when I saw that he was evil, I was like, oh my God, yeah, slay, like got that. And had my theory about like Kelly or Karen been correct, I would have been like, yes, because it wasn't super obvious like that it was going to be Wes, I don't think, but you could still like kind of work out that it was him and you know, and that's still satisfying. With Mrs. Langsbury, I feel like she was so evil, like from the jump that it just was kind of predictable and they thought it was going to be her, like they'd put her name on the board and stuff. Um, and... I'd said in the beginning that season one to me felt very inspired by Halloween and that season two felt very inspired by Scream. And Scream 2 is, the reveal is that it is Mrs. Loomis, so Billy's mum, who obviously Billy dies in the first movie. Um, so she's coming back for revenge. And Mickey Altieri, which is um, a film student at Sydney School, who loves horror films and he's trying to make the ultimate horror film. Um, and they, he like, I can't remember how he got in touch with her, but basically the Wes and Mrs. Lainsbury storyline, it is that. It's literally a carbon copy of Scream 2, which there's a post of a Scream 2, like in Christian's room. And the whole vibe of this season felt very Scream to me. And so to literally say like, oh, this is the sequel, which is what Tabby says, and then to just copy the plot of the Scream sequel, it's just kind of like, do you know what I mean? Like, fair enough if you want to like send people down that path and then throw them off by not actually having the mother figure in it or having it be a different mother figure. But then to just put Mrs. Langsbury and Wes and have it that they kind of bonded after Chip's death and like it's literally the same plot line. Like, mm, do you know what I mean? I feel like taking inspiration from like, Mickey Altieri and having Wes kind of like embody that and stuff is cool like I love the nod to Scream but then also doing like the mother figure who's avenging the death of like her son who's actually evil but she won't accept that he's evil like you know like you didn't have to be that on the nose with it so I'm very 50 50 on this reveal the Wes half and the horror film and all that stuff and the spooky spaghetti I love that I think it's great um the Mrs. Langsbury side I don't love. I wish that that had been somebody else. So more of these like Bloody Rose followers, or I think Wes calls them like his proxies or something. They go to the cinema to try and get the other liars and Christian manages to like hold them off for long enough that the um, girls can get into a car and Noah rings Jen and also like how to hotwire and stuff. And honestly, Jen, bless her heart. Like she's so cringe sometimes. Like when she like rings, when, she, when Noah rings her and it's like, I need you to tell me hot wire a car. And she's like, it would be my honor. I was like, it just gives like, it's Andrew, babe. And we're going to get him. Or like, um, when Ezra's like, 
I have a degree in English. There is nothing I can't handle. Like, I was just like, Jen, babes, come on now. Um, but yeah, so the girls managed to get away and they're driving to the church. So back at the church, you know, Wes is kind of like going through his whole plan, doing his like, you know, the very scream-esque, uh, what do you call it? Like, I was going manifesto, that's not what I mean. Uh monologue like you know in all the screen movies the ghost face does their big like reveal and then they tell their like story and their plan and Wes is doing that and I I thought it was great um and when he said nay I literally <laughs> so funny it's like nay I'll have to put the clip in so that you guys can actually see it because it's like it made me laugh so hard talked about nay celebrated and Tabby slayed this scene she was everything i loved it and then, yeah i love that we're getting this imogen was the final girl in season one tabby's the final girl in season two like and they'll i hope like hopefully we'll carry that through the seasons um and yeah i thought tabby was 10 out of 10 the way that she was able to like turn wes's plan like back onto him and you know was able to like outsmart him and i just loved it i thought it was really really good um and that she won't do what Mrs. Langsbury says. She's like, Chip is what he is. Like, you are not going to scare me into lying about him and saving his reputation. As you should, babes. As you should. Um, so Wes then threatens to have his, like, proxies go after Sydney. And Tabby jumps out of the window. Iconic. Um, and all of the, like, the proxies and Wes, like, chase after her and Bloody Rose stays behind. So they chase after her and she manages to take, like, three of them out because, of course, she does Tabby the baddest bitch. And the liars show up at the church and obviously Bloody Rose is there and literally Farron just kicks her in the face and she's done. Like, do you see what I'm saying? Like, she was so menacing in the, like, different tests and then we get to the end and it's just Mrs. Langsbury. It's like, how was this the woman that was doing all this? Like, the aura is not the same. The vibe is not the same. And then Farrah just kicks her and she's done. Like, mm, I just, I wasn't here for it. I was not here for it. So anyway, Tabby then runs to the Bloody Rose cabin that we saw where Sabrina and Nick died. And, you know, Wes follows and he says that he, like, built this whole thing, like, and it, that's what I liked about it. Like, it was just so calculated from him. And, like, he really used Spooky Spaghetti to harvest this whole, like, find all these people and build these sets. And, like, it was a real-life horror film. And I just thought that was so fun. And I would love if they, like, released as, like, a special episode or, like, on Halloween, like, Wes's movie. Like, I think that would be so fun if they, like, released the edited version. So it's, like, the found footage version of all the girls tasks and like just I would love that I think that would be so fun if they did that um so yeah like and he's basically Tabby is holding up this pitchfork and he's like you're not gonna kill me like obviously not and so she literally charges at him stabs him uh with a pitchfork and then walks out of the cabin so the, the other liars like run up to her and she's just in shock um, and they go in and they see Wes's body. Um, and he does like the classic, like, oh, I'm not dead, like ghost face thing. And then Imogen punches him. And the girls find Dr. Sullivan. She's like being held in a cupboard, like in the cabin. So they free her. And that's kind of it. We get like a two weeks later thing, right? And so the girls are having a meeting with Dr. Sullivan. And kind of just discussing how they're getting on. Um, and we see that Christian and Tabby are still together, which is cute. But Johnny broke up with Imogen because, of course, he fucking did. Because she locked him in a freezer. Literally, when we were watching it on the live stream, all I kept saying and all you guys kept commenting was like, Johnny is still in the freezer. Like, all this stuff is going down. You now know that Johnny's not the killer and you have left him in a freezer with dead bodies so johnny broke up with imogen which i thought was so sad um because i really loved them together for me they had the best like 
chemistry out of any of the new couples that we got this season. Um, and interestingly, Dr. Sullivan says that Wes and Mrs. Lansby were arrested. So that means that Wes didn't die. And I, it seems kind of wild that he didn't die, obviously, because he got stabbed with a pitchfork. However, they didn't remove the pitchfork, right? And like, this is my, this is my Grey's Anatomy, like, brain <laughs> talking right now. From many, a, from many a Grey's Anatomy, from many a Chicago Fire, if you get stabbed, don't take it out. That's like classic in it. That's like 101. Because when the knife or whatever it is that has impaled you is still in you, it's keeping everything like in. Like it's as soon as you take it out, that is when like the blood starts like, you know, all that stuff and you like lose all your blood and you die, basically. So if he was still just there with the pitchforks in him, they're still like keeping him intact, right? So then if the police came or whatever and they just cut uh, like the pitchfork at the ends so that it still stayed in him and then they took him to the hospital, like they might have been able to operate on him and save him. Like it doesn't seem that wild to me that that's what happened. So yeah, Wes and Mrs. Langsbury get arrested. Um, so it'll be interesting to see if they get brought up again. Like, I would really love for Tabby to maybe be more... Because she... I don't know, they seemed very fine. Like, everyone seemed, like, good and chill <laughs> in this, like, thing, um, in this session. So I was a bit like, that's wild. Like, she was so shook and, like, what she went through was so harrowing. And, like, they literally said Imogen was on the verge of a mental breakdown. But now they're like, summer! Um... So I think I would like to see in season three, Tabby kind of like really struggling with what happened to her and actually going to visit Wes because she's like obsessed with horror films and stuff. Like, I wonder if she would find him a little bit like fascinating in a weird way and like go and speak to him and like go and visit him. And then maybe it would get revealed and like the girls would be like, why are you going to visit him? Like, do you know what I mean? Like something like that. And she's just like, kind of fascinated by the way his like mind works and that she kind of has a real life horror villain that she could actually like speak to and like hear like his thought pro like do you know what I mean um so I think that could be kind of interesting if yeah she does go and visit him like in prison um and yeah the spooky spaghetti website shut down and all the proxies like were found and charged and so they decide to suspend their sessions with Dr. Sullivan. They're not going to see her anymore and they're just going to live their best. So the girls and Kelly have pizza together, which I thought was sweet. Like, I'm glad that Kelly's being brought into the fold again. I hope it just stays this way. I don't need another season where Kelly betrays them. And then like, it's literally like Sharpay in High School Musical. Like every time a new High School Musical movie happens, she forgets that she likes these people. And then that we have to come full circle again. I don't need that again from Kelly in season three. And they all actually got matching tattoos, which is cute, like all six of them. And I think that's kind of cute. It's kind of like a nod to how the OG PLL girls like got real life tattoos after the show ended. Um, so yeah, and then we see that the girls all pass their Keystone exam. So they're gonna be able to go through to like junior year or senior year or whatever it is. Um, so that was really cute. I loved that scene as well. So then Tabby and Imogen are just like lying in bed and they're chatting and she asks Tabby, like, are you still going to make your Millwood Massacre movie? And Tabby says, no, she wants to make something new. And while this is happening, we get these like flash clips, like cut in between of, um, a gang, like walking through Millwood High um, and they're all dressed like each of our five girls and they have masks on that look like them. Um, but I think like two of them were guys. Um, and then, yeah, so they were like pretending to be the girls, which I thought was crazy. Like, and it seemed like they were maybe going to kill people, like, but dressed as the girls. Like, that is a crazy concept. Um, and so I'm huge into that. I think that would be absolutely crazy um, if that's the plot for season three. Then the final scene 
of the finale is Dr. Sullivan talking to her publisher and he says like, you know, this book is going to be amazing. We just need the five subjects, so like our five liars, to sign off on it. And she says, don't worry, these girls are narcissists. Like, they're obviously going to sign off on this book and even if they, you know like don't want to then money talks like we'll get them to sign off or something like that like it was such a flip it was crazy like and it just made me question everything I was like so obviously she didn't care about the girls but did she care about the OG liars like did she care about them and then the death of her son like turned her bitter like I wanted to know like what the thought process was here right then Archie comes into the office and she begs him, because obviously he wasn't dead, like, come on now. And she basically begs him, like, to tell her what happened to her son. And he doesn't. He just kills her. I assume that he did kill her son, I think. Like, there was, like, the A in the branches. Like, I think he probably did. But the fact that she died not knowing was a crazy, like, thing to add in. And, yeah. So he kills Dr. Sullivan and Dr. Sullivan's death is the closing scene of season two. So, uh, yeah. So, let's get into, like, my thoughts and things. So, yeah, like I said, not a fan of Mrs. Langsbury, but I did really like the Wes motive. I loved the spooky spaghetti and the gang and, like, all that stuff. I thought that was 10 out of 10. Really, really good. In terms of, like, season three... Greg and Farron, like, now that she's friends with Kelly again, how is that going to work? Are we going to have, like, them kind of sneaking around and Farron, like, hiding Greg and, like, the fact that they're together? Um, is Archie, like, the season three big bad? Or is it going to be this, like, gang that's pretending to be the liars? Either way, super excited to see how they go about that. I do wonder if Johnny will return. I hope that he will. Um, and that like Imogen, I would like, I would like for them to keep things consistent. Like obviously Noah has consistently worked at the pizzeria. Um, Tabby has consistently worked at the Orpheum. And so I would like for Imogen to like keep her job at the creamery. Um, cause that like makes like continuity wise makes sense. And then also we would get to see Johnny again. I wonder like if he will return for season three or if their relationship arc is kind of done now. Maybe we'll get someone new, but I hope not um because I did like her and Johnny so I hope they he like sticks around and they maybe rekindle by I don't want it to be the end of season three because I want to see them together but yeah I hope they like they rekindle because I thought they were really sweet together um Rebecca uh Imogen's like new mother-in-law to be I think there's weird stuff about her I think she might be Angela I don't know I just think she looks like They've casted a woman that looks way too similar to Angela to, like, for that not to mean something, maybe. And, like, I just got a weird vibe from her. So I'm going to be keeping my eye on her in season three. I also think it would be kind of, like, a fun nod to the OG PLL to open season three with Dr. Sullivan's funeral. Kind of like the liars at Ian's funeral. Like, if it's the open casket and all five of the liars, like, throw the dirt on and, you know... I feel like the OG PLL loved a funeral scene. Like, we had Moda's funeral, we had Wilden's, we had uh, Allison's, Ian's. I'm sorry, I've been talking for so long. Like, I feel like my cold, like, it's all, like, starting to come back and now my voice is getting weird. So I would love for them to open with Dr. Sullivan's funeral and maybe it's set in Rosewood. Like, that could lead to some, like, fun cameos or something. Um, and I think that Farron will be the final girl for season three. Um... I still think it could be Karen somehow. I still think Karen could be alive somehow, somewhere. And that because Farron was kind of her biggest rival, maybe like Imogen, but like Farron, um, she would then come head to head with Farron at the end. Because if Farron's the final girl, I feel like it needs to tie into her in some way. Um, so that would be really cool. So that is it for today's video. Make sure you guys like, comment and subscribe. Let me know what you thought of the finale down in the comments um yeah you follow me on instagram and join the membership if you want to and i have loads of fun videos planned so look forward to those also i will be doing a season three video like as soon as season three is announced or we get more information about it 
I will let you guys know. I think someone posted online that the potential title for it is pre Liar Scene Stealer or something. Um, so that's pretty interesting. Um, so yeah. I overall, I liked it, loved this season, preferred this season to season one, but yeah. The the reveal is very 50-50 for me, so I want to see what you guys think as well. Yeah. Bye guys.